But as we are going to become accustomed to, another bitter, angry little man alert. Uh, in this case, people want the message, a CMS mailer. Sometimes you use, uh, I've never clicked on new soap in five or six years of working with this stuff, but that's an infrastructural module. Uh, there's administrative modules, such as module manager. And then there's two kinds that you don't see very much of, uh, event handlers. First solution is output uses a template, uh, and then people can format it however they choose. Second is we're going to use that do action method to uh, provide more options. So let's look at the templates. Uh, first, we create a templates directory in our module directory. Uh, we'll create our first template, which is hello.tpl. Um, templates use the Smarty Markup language, as you've already heard. And uh, I think Ted already pointed out this manual, but you will come to know and love it because you will continuously be going back and finding out what function you need to do what it is you want. Here's our template. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, this is a smarty comment, so that gets ignored. Uh, we went with the H2 option. Uh, the person who wanted it in paragraph tag is going to have to go in and edit this file. Um, we're calling that same function, the, the lang function on our string. Uh, the mod reference is a reference to the module, which we assign in our do action. So smarty is an object that, or uh, called hello world. And the first file we create is also called hello world. And you can, uh, that's just to save a little memory. If you do a straight assign, it makes memory copies at least that only in PHP 4, I, I get confused as yeah. to which version does it right and which one does on PHP 4. Uh, but this, this is a safe way of doing it. So you're saying, uh, you're assigning the module to this string mod and going, going back, uh, we're just calling the language <laughs> on that. All right, got to figure out which way I'm going here. Uh, and then we tell our module, once we've done this assignment, process that template. It's actually more simple than made it seem. What about security by assigning by reference? Because you can change uh, this in template. You could. You yeah. could. Um, at this point, these templates are s still stored on the file system, so you're having to trust your uh, template writer. Um, but that is a good point. OK, so at this point, our output is templated. Uh, the site developer could go in and change that to whatever they would like it to look like. We still have only one action, which is the hello world. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to build out the do action uh, method. Now, there's multiple ways of doing this. We're going to start by doing it inline, because we're writing a, a fairly compact module. So one of the things that gets passed to the do action function, the method, is this action string. And there's a magic value called default. Uh, there's others, which we'll get into later. Uh, but when somebody is placing their tag in their page, they specify an action. So if they uh, pass the action hello, we're going to call a function within our module called do hello, and we're going to pass it some of those parameters. If it's goodbye, we're going to call the do goodbye function. Uh, as I said, there's this magic default, uh, and the other parameters we'll get to later. Uh, here we implement those two functions that get called by our do action, and they're actually identical with the exception of which template they call. So this is not the most efficient programming, but it's just as an example. Uh, so we've created our goodbye template, and it is very much like our hello template, with the exception we're calling a different key from the lang. Uh, one of the nice things is modules can be included multiple times in the page. So here we go. We're including hello world with the action hello. Then we're including it again with the action goodbye. So we look at our page and we say hello world. And oh, here's what we forgot to do. We forgot to add the goodbye world string to our lang file. So there's this nice helpful reminder, add me. So we go and add our goodbye world string. And then we reload it and we get our <laughs> so, we've covered a lot already. Uh, we've talked about the basic module file, uh, we've talked about localization, templates, multiple actions, 
it seems like we're doing really well. Well, every time you think you're doing really well, bitter, angry little man alert. So, because we've had released multiple versions of this module, people are starting to get confused. Some people have on one server the one installed that says only hello, some have the one that says goodbye. It's hard to tell because they're all version 0.0.0.1. So, it gets confusing. <coughs> so what we really need to do is have the module uh, report its version so that we can do management of that. And this kind of opens up a can of worms because once you do installation, you have to be able to manage upgrade, uninstall. Uh, and this opens up yet another can of worms, which is that these and other methods can be separated out into their own files. Uh, and I'll go into more detail why you want to separate out into separate files uh, for these methods. Um, but let's, let's start with reporting version. Uh, the module API has a method get version and the related methods for install, upgrade, and uninstall. So we're going to start by adding these to the module. Uh, our version, we're jumping straight to 1.0 because we're confident this is a serious, ready for prime time module. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of new functions here. There's the audit function. And this is really helpful to have in these particular methods. This writes to the admin log. Uh, so uh, the first parameter is the user. Uh, I'm just passing zero. Uh, the next is the module name. So rather than hard coding that, I get it from the module's get name function. Um, Later, as you improve modules, uh, there's a friendly name and there's a module name. The friendly name is sort of a translated human readable string. Uh, you could use get friendly name here instead. Uh, and then we're passing the installed string. Now, you haven't seen this before. We've got a lang string with a comma in it and another parameter, which is our get version. And if we go to the language file, uh, you can pass parameters to strings, so that gets substituted in. <coughs> so what that will say is, you know, hello world version, followed by the version number installed. Um, our uninstall, again, all it's going to do is write to the log, uh, and our upgrade. Uh, now, the upgrade method takes uh, two parameters. One is the old version, one is the new version, so you can do manipulations based on those things. And we're going to see that later is very, very powerful because as the module gets extended and new functionality gets added, sometimes you'll need to create database tables or revise the format of the data. So you look at the version that's coming in and you know what the structure is, and you look at the, your new version and you know what you need to do to make it work. So this is really valuable in making your modules upgrade really cleanly, and this makes for happy users. If you break backwards compatibility, you'll get a lot more angry, bitter responses. So as I showed, we upgrade our, our, update our LANG file.